The content of this podcast is based on medical fact and evidence-based practice from credible authoritative sources, but is not a substitute for your institution's policies, procedures, common sense, or good judgment. The views and opinions are those of Eric Bauer and Flight Bridge Ed in their entirety. We've all had those days when things go wrong at the worst possible moment. But for Jeff Murphy of Master Your Medics, even a technical glitch at Fast couldn't slow him down. In our latest episode of the Fast Archives miniseries, he delivers his talk without a single note or slide to guide him. Jeff's talk, entitled Paramedics, the Master Multitasker, right, is based on a personal story from his time in the field. It got him thinking about multitasking, how it can be a lifesaver or a stumbling block. His insights into what makes multitasking work and what doesn't are thought-provoking, to say the least. And because he just had to wing it, his talk feels even more personal and engaging. So put on your headphones or set your cruise control and let's explore multitasking with Jeff Murphy. As always, thanks so much for listening and we hope you enjoyed the episode. A few years ago, I was dispatched to a pretty major head trauma patient and the way things work in Canada, where I, where I work, is that we would fly to small airstrips to meet rural ambulances, transfer care there, and then we would fly them down south to a major hospital in order to, for them to get continued care. And so we, my partner and I, we were flying to this small little strip and we arrived there. And I remember walking up to the side door of the ambulance and I opened the door. And all I see is a patient that's supine with gauze wrapped around his head, pretty well blood soaked, and a paramedic that's in the airway chair that's trying to ventilate with a mask and a BVM. And he's obviously overwhelmed, really stressed out, not handling the situation very well at all. So when I saw this, I instinctively jumped in and took over care took that place in that airway chair and started ventilating with one hand and one on the BVM and ventilating this patient while the other paramedic was doing something else. Now, my partner and I, uh, were, we were new together, and th- that partner that I was working with was also quite uh, new to flight medicine. And so we agreed that since this was one of his first major trauma patients, that I was going to manage this call and do a lot of the delegations, make sure that patient management was appropriate. And so I started to do that as I'm ventilating this patient and I'm calling out what medications I want to do to prepare for any, you know, uh, any hypotension. I was preparing for this RSI and I was thinking about what we were going to do for event management strategy. So I was doing all this and I was being very detailed because I knew that he needed that because he was new. What I wasn't thinking about is the skill that I was doing at the time, which was trying to ventilate this patient uh, at the same time as doing all these delegations and trying to get patient management under control. And so while I was doing those delegations, I looked over at the Life Pack 15 and I noticed that the SpO2 had dropped into the low 80s. And so as soon as I noticed that, I stopped doing any of the delegations, any of the patient management, and focus 100% on ventilating this patient to get him back up to the mid-90s. And it took some time and some effort in order to do that. But after we did that, we got him back into the mid-90s. The RSI went well. Everything went good. We got him on the ventilator, transported another two hours down to a major hospital to get treatment. And everything else went very, very well. And from uh, my partner and I's perspective, we thought, we thought that the management of that patient was, uh, was quite successful. And we were pretty happy with what happened. Until three months later, we were dispatched to a patient that we were going to be returning from that same hospital that we handed over care to, to a rehabilita- rehabilitation facility. And I walk up to the back of the ambulance, I open the doors, and I see the same patient that we treated with that head injury a few months prior. And he had very significant physical deficits, very significant mental deficits, and he was unable to control any of his emotions whatsoever. And as soon as I saw the state that he was in, I immediately thought about that hypoxic event that occurred when I was 
trying to do too much. And that's immediately what I thought. And also for the entire transport to this rehabilitation facility, I started really thinking about, was it possible that me trying to control everything in that scene, including these very difficult skills and ventilating a patient that's very sick and doing all this at the same time, was that the reason that that hypoxic event occurred? And if it was the reason that that hypoxic event occurred, is it possible that the deficits that we're seeing with him were my fault. And I thought about this the entire flight and transport for this patient, and uh, I felt very emotionally connected to this patient at this point, and uh, at the moment felt quite guilty. And I wasn't sure really what to think until I started kind of getting my mind wrapped around the thought, like, you know what, we're, we're paramedics, and we're nurses, and we're, we're built to get all this chaotic environment under control, multitask through it, get the job done, get the patient to definitive care. That's our job. And if it's our job, and that's the way that we train, we must be the exception of this multitasking world where we're actually pretty good at it. And I tried to convince myself of it. And I still try and kind of come up with this excuse with it. And uh, this is five years ago, six years ago, when this whole event occurred. And to this day, I remember when, when Eric asked me to, to speak for you guys today, um, this is the call that kind of came front and center of what I wanted to talk about. And that's where kind of my talk about multitasking really comes into play because what happened as soon as I got asked to speak and I kind of had this opportunity, what I did is I figured I'd put multitasking to the test to something that we can relate to. And I used that scenario that I was in with this head injury patient and ventilating at the same time to test our skills. And so I, what I did, is I had a Seven Sigma mannequin, it was really kind of real looking mannequins, and I wanted paramedics and nurses to ventilate with one hand on the BVM, one hand on the mask, and ventilate this patient for two minutes uninterrupted. So there was no distractions whatsoever for those two minutes to see how well we did. And we were shooting for about 450 mils of volume and one breath every five seconds. And you know what? Of the, the six people that we were able to get before I came and spoke here, um, everyone was able to manage 450 mils about 95% of the time, and one breath every five seconds was no problem whatsoever when we were not being interrupted. The next two minutes, I wanted to keep them distracted. And so what I did in those two minutes is I asked them patient management questions pertaining to this head injury patient that most flight nurses and flight paramedics would be able to answer. And so I want them to answer them as accurately as possible, like we would have to uh, in a real call. And what we found in those two minutes of interrupted time on the BVM is that we overventilated the patient about 28% of the time, meaning that we had over 450 mils plus 10%. So we were over that. The other 50% of the, another 50% of the time, we underventilated the patient, which I found quite interesting. And I believe it's because when we were interrupting them with questions and they were listening intently and trying to think of the answer, they were ending up breaking seal of the mask while they're trying to think at the same time and trying to focus too much on one thing and not on the other. And that's the main reason we feel that, at least reviewing the video that we did, why we had such a problem ventilating this patient, we were so underventilated. And the other 22%, we were able to ventilate them within the range that we wanted. And the second thing that was interesting is that we had a significant decrease in the amount of ventilations that occurred in the two minutes. And so we were having much longer pauses in between ventilations which I thought was quite interesting. And so what we saw in the video of most, of pretty much every one of the practitioners is that whenever they were listening to a complicated question that I was asking, they would stop ventilating and then they would also respond with the answer as well, which could have been long winded as well. And so they would just sit there and not ventilate. And so what was interesting is that they weren't simultaneously doing both tasks. And so I started to dig more into this idea of multitasking and what the brain actually does. And so we have a something in our prefrontal cortex 
called the Executive Control Center. And what it's going to do, this prefrontal cortex is going to allow us to prioritize tasks and try and simplify, simplify them enough that we can shift back and forth between them. So for the study that they did, for example, is that they used the shapes and they used simple math that got increasingly difficult. And what they did is they wanted these participants in this study in order uh, to try and answer what shapes were and what the math was simultaneously and try and do it at the same time. And what they found is that no one was really able to do that. What they did instead is that they would just simply rapidly shift back and forth between answering the rules of shapes and then shift over to understanding the goals of addition and subtraction to answer the math problem. So they weren't doing it at the same time. They were just shifting back and forth at a rapid pace. But what they found as, as the shapes got more complicated and the math got more complicated, what they found is, is that there was an increase in delay, or I guess I should say there was a delay in shifting back and forth. They were much slower and moving back between the shapes and the math. And also they found that the more difficult that it got, the more mistakes were made. And in our realm of things, more mistakes mean more mistakes in medications, mistakes in patient management, and mistakes in skills like ventilating a patient while trying to do other things and so multitasking could have a pretty detrimental effect on our patients. Now, I know you're thinking right now, I'm also a flight paramedic and still to this day, and you're probably thinking, you know what? We don't have a choice. We need to multitask. We have so many things going on. We have to you know, prepare the RSI. We need to be thinking about the event strategy. We need to make sure that this patient is resuscitated properly before we even do any of that. So we have so much already on the mind as well as the skills that need to be done. And of course, we have our transport physicians that are always calling us at the perfect moment for that quick update. There's just so much to be done. And uh, luckily, I'm not here to tell you that you shouldn't multitask. What I'm here to tell you is that we can choose the tasks that we do simultaneously and blend them together in order to limit our mistakes. So for the example that I had with my head injury patient, instead of walking up and taking over that patient care completely and just doing all of it, what I could have done is I could have held the mask in a two-person ventilation and let that and coach that paramedic and help them kind of regain some control. And then I could have started focusing on patient management, doing a much more simple task and blend it with a complicated task. And that way, the risk of error is much lower. Or recognizing that when I'm drawing up medications, and when you're drawing up medications, recognizing that that is a high risk situation that has, that could be riddled with error and problems and making sure that we're not doing anything but that. So our focus is not split at that time. And knowing how our brain works in multitasking can allow us to kind of have pause and think about that before we try and rush in and do too much. And if we do that, we'll find that we'll have less chaos in our calls We'll be able to manage things better, under more control, and ultimately our patients and their families will thank us for it. Thank you. This has been a production of the Flight Bridge Ed Podcast, leading the way in pre-hospital critical care and emergency medicine education. 